Armored Core 6 is an amazing game, and I'm super happy that I gave it a chance, because I had very limited experience with the Armored Core series before this. I played one of the games about 10 years ago, and don't remember most of it. All I knew is I wasn't supposed to be expecting a Soulsborne game. And it's absolutely not Soulsborne. Because Armored Core 6 is easy to jump into with fast-paced and highly vertical combat. It's a mech shooter through and through. So if you like FromSoft game design, but you don't necessarily like Dark Souls, I won't say this game is completely dissimilar. There are certain key mechanics that are kind of similar, like with a stagger ACS strain system, and like with a fact that you're going to be using different loadouts to challenge different enemies. But overall, it's a very different game, and I absolutely love it, along with the story that it tells. So to start off, your Armored Core has one weapon in each hand, left hand, right hand, including the option to equip a melee weapon to your right hand, and one weapon on each shoulder, including the option to equip a defensive shield. Generally speaking, your shoulder weapons are heavier, they do a bit more damage, they often have more limited ammo, and your main hand and offhand weapons are a little bit lighter because they're the guns you're holding. Kind of makes sense. Of course, this is a mech game set in the future, so your weapons target automatically, missiles lock onto enemies, and there's even soft locking with other melee weapons. If you dislike this, you can enter manual aim mode, with an option to completely unlock that later. However, many of the enemies move around incredibly quickly, and it's going to be difficult to hit them when you're manual aiming. Because that's the thing, you're not just a guy in armor, you're an augmented human piloting an armored core. And your armored core is highly maneuverable, but this comes at the cost of energy. Energy is used to fly around, it's used to evade attacks with quick boost, or charge at enemies aggressively with assault boost. You aren't invulnerable during assault boost, but it is quite often the case that enemies completely miss you as you're charging towards them, simply because their weapons are firing on a different trajectory based on your previous speed. So, there are a lot of advantages to being aggressive, just like with other FromSoft titles. You could equip your armored core with a wide variety of weapons. Some of these include kinetic weapons like guns, shotguns, and rifles. Many ACs do rely on kinetic weapons, and these are some of the most balanced weapons in Armored Core 6, but as a result, many of them aren't too exceptional. Though shotguns are a little bit overpowered, so if you want easy mode, maybe use those, and if you want more of a challenge, maybe don't. Next up, we have my personal favorite category, explosive weapons. These include missile launchers, grenades, bazookas, and more. I like using a lot of the heavier explosive weapons due to the massive damage they deal, which can instantly stagger a boss, and the wide-ranging area of effect they have. Unfortunately, most explosive weapons are slow to reload and require your AC to enter into a firing stance unless you are using a heavier chassis. So there are downsides, especially against the more agile foes that you fight in the latter half of the game. And then there are energy weapons, lasers, plasma, pulse weaponry. These are an extremely diverse class of weapons with a lot of different effects. For example, pulse weapons absolutely melt enemy shields. Lasers have a pretty high consistent damage output, and generally speaking can be fired multiple times before they'll overheat, effectively going on cooldown. And plasma weapons can be charged to cause a massive explosion, kind of giving you the best of both worlds between energy and explosive. As you progress through the game's various missions, you'll constantly be able to swap out and upgrade your Armored Core's gear. The part shop sells these upgrades, and it also purchases any part at full price, allowing you to swap your full setup as desired. If at any time during a mission you fail, you'll be able to rework your setup by going to the assembly tab and then start again from the checkpoint. Some missions do not have checkpoints, however these are pretty infrequent and tend to be a little bit outside of a norm like a defense mission. But for all the boss fights in the game, you will be able to swap when you fail, and some of those swaps are very impactful. There are times where I was fighting a boss and it felt like difficulty level impossible. After changing up my setup using different weapons, it swapped to I did it in one try level of difficulty. Armored Core 6 is about playing through different missions. With each, you're offered a job, usually through your handler Walter, and you have to complete various objectives for the game's factions. There's the Cold and Calculating Archibus Group, the Loud and In-Your-Face Balaam Corporation, rival to Archibus, the Rubicon Liberation Front, who to some are people just trying to survive and others are terrorists sabotaging the corporations. I'll leave this one up to you to decide. 
or you can complete missions for your close allies like Handler Walter himself, the man who brought you to Rubicon. But can you trust him? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide after you play the game. So during your playthrough, you'll make enemies, overcome challenging foes, and you might even find a friend along the way. Most of the missions proceed in a set order, but any mission that's marked with a little symbol that kind of looks like a computer chip represents a choice in the game. Most of these choices do not have any permanent impact on the ending. Instead, they make subtle alterations to how the next few missions or events play out. But there are specific inflection points at which your ending is chosen, or at the very least, or enabled. Think about your choices carefully, but that said, the game isn't all that long, and you can and should jump into a new game plus after you beat it, so don't worry too much, you can always make different choices on your second time around. And the last thing that I really like about Armored Core 6 is you're stronger than many of the MTs you fight. You get to decimate them en masse, but if there are too many of them in one location, they can slowly overwhelm you. This is still definitely a From Software title, and the bosses are fairly challenging and also cinematic masterpieces. But at least for me, the game isn't as difficult, at least not on the same level, as the Soulsborne titles. Most fights only took me a couple tries, but I still very much enjoyed the game's bosses and how each had their own unique style to them. I also especially liked the way in some of the game's later portions, the boss fights were kind of remixed where you fight the same enemy, but it has no moves and is a little bit tougher. I found that swapping up my weapons to properly inflict ACS strain and stagger bosses was a key to defeating most of them. And if you want to know more about the ACS strain system, then do get subscribed for my upcoming video on that. Maybe leave a like while you're down there. But for now, how does it feel to play Armored Core 6? First up, the game does a great job of getting you into the action with Mission 1. The tutorial is simple but functional. Several of the tutorial elements happen as you're playing, and others are these little pause screens that kind of give you the basics but don't waste too much of your time. It introduces all of the game's core mechanics in a way that feels pretty dynamic while also making you feel like a badass. But your first boss encounter does set the stage for all later boss encounters, at least the big ones that will be finishing up an act. If you paid attention during the tutorial, you shouldn't have too much trouble with a PCA gunship. You can stagger it using your small arms, then assault boost in for a big old melee to the face. But a lot of people also said this is the game's filter, or at least the game's first filter because many people did get stuck and probably didn't pay too much attention to the tutorial. Now, the next mission I remember very distinctly is the battle against the Strider, because this is a cinematic piece. You're not really fighting it in a way that it's going to be a challenging one-on-one -on -one battle. I mean, it's a giant mining laser. Or at least it's a giant laser mounted to a mining machine. We get to chip away at it, and it's very much a David vs. Goliath situation. In fact, I found out quickly that I had the upper hand against the Strider, because I could use its own body to block its attacks, and it could not do the same to me. So while this mission was easier than a lot of others at that point, it was a lot of fun. It helps you feel strong and successful, which is especially important because the missions do get more difficult from here on out. For example, moving on to Operation Wall Climber, the game kind of hit a turning point where the difficulty definitely ramps up. In the early part of Operation Wall Climber, there's fire from every direction and you really do have to be mindful of your cover. So I spent a lot of time hiding in the trench and using terrain. This is very important later. I then fought the tetrapod with a uh, mixed success where I got hit far more than I should, but did take it out, and then grabbed the artillery embankments along the way for extra money. This is a very good but somewhat painful learning experience as it did take me a couple tries to get past the tetrapod because the first time around I took way too many hits trying to just fly into the center. And then you fight the juggernaut. Or at least you and Rusty, V4 of the Vespers, fight the juggernaut. It's extremely powerful, but grounded, so you can use your aerial superiority to take it out without too much issue. This is something I noticed a lot with Armored Core 6. The game sets your expectations from mission to mission, and then upsets them. For example, with the investigation of the boss arsenal. The stealth mechs absolutely sucked when I first encountered them, because uh, I kind of forgot that the scanner was a thing. And I also found that my shotgun, which before had been chewing through stuff without issue, kind of struggle against these. So after failing, I changed things up and smashed through them. They tended to be very stationary, making them sitting ducks for heavier weapons. And then I proceeded on until I encountered the Watchpoint mission, the final mission of Act 1. And this is where the narrative started to get more interesting, because this mission did not come from one of the corporations, it came directly from Walter himself. 
First up, you are put in front of a firing squad of various different MTs. They have a lot of long range weapons. So again, you need to stick to cover like you learned from previous missions. Sula is by far the most dangerous AC that you fought to date, or at least the most dangerous one I fought to date. And then you encounter the game's second great filter, the Balteus. And this fight was absolutely exhilarating. It was from this point where I was completely hooked on the game's combat. This is also where you meet Air of Rubiconian, someone who is very core to the game's central narrative. And I won't say too much on that, except that you also learn a little bit about the Coral and Fires of Ibis, which I'll show now, or feel free to skip ahead to the next section if you don't want any spoilers. Who are you? An older type of augmented human, fourth generation. Have we made contact? I am Air, a Rubiconian. Please, you must wake up. Before your consciousness is forever scattered in the coral flow. The coral surge you were swept up in? That was just a glimpse. Premonition of the storm of flame that will burn Rubicon. From there, the game continues and the story unfolds. And like with many sci fi stories, it deals with a question of what makes us human and what does it mean to be alive? But at least in terms of video game retellings of that story, I really like the approach that they took. Looking at it not only from the perspective of an augmented human, like 621, the player character, but also a completely different life form entirely. In the first couple of chapters, especially chapter one, I focused more on the combat and didn't pay too much attention to the story. However, especially moving into chapter three and beyond, the game's story really drew me in. And it wasn't for the combat that I beat the game a second time. It was for the story. I wanted to see both endings and I wanted to see how my choices affected the world or at the very least affected Rubicon. So now that I've talked about how you play Armored Core and what it feels like to play Armored Core, I wanted to talk about some general observations with my full experience beating the game twice. It felt like there was a good bit of variety when it comes to the enemies you fight and the tasks you complete for your missions. It helped things stay interesting and the occasional AC battle definitely spiced things up. There are some stealth missions where you need to accomplish your task without alerting enemy MTs. Sometimes you need to just kill a bunch of little stuff or other times you're assassinating a single target, which is very often a dangerous AC pilot like yourself. In a couple of cases, you even have to fight two on one, and oh boy, those can get difficult. Because the power of an armored core is undeniable, you're able to annihilate most MTs without even trying, and you can even take on warships like the PCA's heavy cruisers. But this also means many of the game's most dangerous foes are going to be small, fast, and fight in a manner similar to yourself. The game begins as a battle between factions, but by the end, it's about so much more the corals, the fire of Ibis, and the way in which the past haunts the present. Like I said before, some choices do lead you down a path that leads to a specific ending. And from the start, there's two endings you can end up with. Then, if you continue playing the game and beat it three times, there's a third ending which is exclusive to New Game Plus Plus. You get more story, a few cool fights, and I absolutely recommend beating the game at least twice, if not all three times. I found that after I got the hang of the fights, it was really easy to go back and do them again. Sure, a couple of the initial more challenging fights took me one to two hours, but the second time it took me one to two tries, and most other missions I simply didn't fail. It was fun to go back through the game and come up against the things which had previously challenged me, previously made me feel, well, like I wasn't able to beat them until I did, or like I was just getting by by the skin of my teeth and absolutely crush them. Plus, the game feels quite different if you change up your build. I used several throughout my two playthroughs. Sometimes I had a bunch of shotguns, other times I was a walking missile launcher. I quite liked the stun needle, which I picked up towards the end of chapter three. And the good old songbirds are also some of my favorite heavy weapons. Between different missions, I found success with a lot of different styles of combat. There are some that are objectively stronger than others, of course, but overall, you kind of get to tailor the game's difficulty to what you like. 
You can go with some super OP weapons and absolutely crush everything, or go with some super underpowered weapons and try punching enemies to death. Though, uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not quite sure how you're going to make it through a few of those fights if all you're doing is punching stuff to death. So I would say Armored Core 6 is a great game, and possibly one of, if not the best mech shooters that I've ever played. Initially, it was definitely the gameplay that drew me in, and I was surprised at how well the game played on PC. From Software is kind of notorious for making really good games that are console first, ported to PC later, and don't perform all that well from a PC control standpoint. But this game very much feels made for PC first, and overall it was great. I could even run the game at 120 hertz and actually get 120 FPS when I wanted to. So when it comes to Armored Core 6, you could say that I came for the gameplay, stayed for the story, and now I kind of want to go back and try other Armored Core titles, because I don't have that much experience with a series, and I'm really curious how the games have evolved over the years. So if you want to see me try other older AC titles, at least those that are available on PC, if any, do be sure to let me know down in the comments below. But for now, I need to go because there's a third ending, and I'm strongly considering diving back into the game to play it one last time. Oh, also, there's PvP if you care about that stuff. Personally, I don't, which is why I left it out of my review, because I'm kind of the wrong person to be reviewing Armored Core PvP, but if you like it, it's there, and uh, yeah. That's about all I have to say on PvP in Armored Core 6. And for those of you who stuck around, I do want to say, of the two endings, I definitely preferred the Liberator of Rubicon route over the other. Though, if you want to see my thoughts on the Liberator of Rubicon ending, then check out the video from the games I played in September, which I'll link up in the card and down below. But with that said, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you cannot make videos just like this one possible. And those are my thoughts on Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Thank you again for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on Rubicon, buddy.